the last time I saw Rob Dragon was in a cliche, at least that's how it feels looking back on it. I'd prefer to believe that for a brief moment life slowed one afternoon and despite the glaring light I was able to catch a glimpse of the thread that held our fates together for a time. However, an all too familiar acquaintance with the fractal light structure and polishing tendencies of an aging memory keep me from making the leap. I didn't really know what to make of Rob when I first met him. Immediately he seemed familiar yet distant. Like a classmate from school you bump into years later. In front of you stands your old friend, but so much has happened in the interim that there are only shallow pools of the person you knew, locked up inside someone who has grown up between you. Rob had an interesting way of looking at the world. It didn't necessarily include any Aristotle-like insight into this mess, but in some way he made it seem okay that so much of it was unfathomable. He had a happy acceptance of the never-ending chaos that makes up our daily lives. It was hilarious for him to watch, even when it brought him low, which made it even more perplexing when he took a handgun. Pulled the trigger. and turned his head inside out all over the back seat of his car. I helped him buy the gun. I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but I don't want to make any excuses. He asked an odd question during one of our normally lengthy conversations. If you wanted to buy a gun, where would you go? He wasn't from the area and he often asked me about shops and street names. I know. That seems like an excuse and I said I didn't want to make any. I answered him thoughtlessly and the conversation moved on. Later, even the bundle of hose and duct tape I found in his car couldn't assuage my feelings of being complicit. An odd thing, I cannot for the life of me remember who was older, Rob or myself. He seemed older gave advice like he was older, but I don't know if he was or not. Even now, 13 years on, though I am much older than he ever became, he feels older to me. It was a warm spring afternoon. Rob had been home with what he said was a cold for the past few weeks. I had left messages, but gotten no response. Then, like I fully expected would happen, he came bounding in, seemingly recovered and apologetic about his absence. He made some small talk and amends for things he missed. He even scheduled some future plans with a few other friends that happened to be around. Then he turned to go. I was working on something near the door. 
I don't remember what it was, but I am sure that it seemed important at the time. He stopped with the door halfway open. Cool air blew in around me. I looked up to see Rob silhouetted by the sinking sun. He smiled. Thanks, he said. I looked straight at him for a moment. And then I asked him what he was thanking me for. And he answered. Everything. The last time I saw Rob Drogan was in a cliché.